People take this nation for granted. This is about my life, but it's also really a love letter to America. Why did you decide to write Every Day is a Gift? Um, I had often wanted to write about Walter Reed and all the great people there and tell their stories. Um, and then I read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, and it really inspired me because I learned so much about South Africa and apartheid and his life. Um, he's biracial like me, and he talked about seeing both sides, and and, and that really inspired me to, to okay, let's 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 think, talk seriously about this. Was it hard to do? You know, it was hard to do because I had to open up a lot about a lot of things, and I had to deal with my feelings about my father, and it actually helped me develop my feelings and then sort of come to peace with my dad. Even when I was, you know, a young child, I don't know how old I was when my dad left. I think I must have been four or five. Um, I knew we were in economic and financial peril when my dad left, because the first thing I did when I, my mom said, your dad's got to go back to America, we can't go with him, um, was to run. And if you go, if you're ever in an Asian house, go look under the sink. There's always a 40 pound bag of rice. That's the first thing I did as a five or six year old was run to the kitchen to make sure there was rice to eat. I knew, I mean, like I instinctively knew that that was peril. Early on in life, I was a daddy's girl because I was always tagging along, you know, with my dad doing everything that he wanted to do. And then as I got older, it was very antagonistic because I knew he wasn't proud of me. Um, at, you know, in my, in my young mind, I thought he wasn't proud of me. He loves my brother better. I'm just the girl. I'm not good enough. Um, it was always, you know, trying to do better, be better. And I never got it. And then when he passed away, it was, um, you know, what a jerk he was. And he was terrible. And he was terrible to the family. And he let us down. And he was terrible to my mom. And, you know, left her in debt and all of that. And then as I matured, you know, I, I sort of, I sort of, well, he's just a flawed guy. And then with the book, I learn more and more, and um, you know, I'm at peace. He, he, he was just a guy. He was just a guy and dealing with his problems, and in doing the book, I realized that actually there was a foundation laid for, for this early on that I didn't realize I had. Um, you know, just the tribulations of going through poverty in Hawaii and, and, and earlier on, and I, I never connected the t that, that maybe some of the skills I have now really started way back when. And, but then it also was really great because it put me in touch with all sorts of people from the day of my shoot down that I had never met or heard of. And, and in researching, I was able to find these folks and, and fill in the gaps that are missing in my memory of that day. Now this is an incident you don't have a lot of, didn't have a lot of personal memories of, right? There are some things I remember clear. Everything to do with getting the aircraft on the ground, I remember. Because it was the most important thing. I like, I, that is, I relive that, I relive that. Um, I don't remember the multiple times that I woke up. Once I passed out in the aircraft, um, I don't remember anything. Once the aircraft was on the ground and I knew that she was on the ground, it was almost like, and then I passed out. And then I don't remember any of that, but, um, we found multiple people over the years have actually contacted me and said, I want you to know what, I want you to know what you did. It was hard to know what my buddies went through for me. I just hated that they had to go through that. Um, and it was hard knowing that taking care of me affected so many of these people literally for decades and I didn't know because these folks stepped forward and said, it's the most searing memory of my career. Um, and and uh, that's really hard for me. Going through it, see for me, I thought I would die. So it, that was not hard because I'm like, I survive at the end of this, right? I received the gift of life in this. And so that wasn't hard for me. What really hurts and, and pains me is what my buddies went through. Cause I, and, and total strangers, what, what they went through to take care of me. If you could be a U.S. Senator or a helicopter pilot today, which would you choose? Helicopter pilot. Because? Because it's the privilege of wearing my nation's colors and leading those. It's, it's, it's the troops. It's the military men and women to wear her colors and lead those troops. And, and, and is, there's nothing like it. Those men and women who serve are something extraordinary. They're ordinary and they're extraordinary at the same time. They're ordinary Americans who step forward, but they're extraordinary people.
It cost you a lot. It cost you both your legs. Any regrets? No, I, I've gained more. If you told me right now, Tammy, snap my fingers, you go back to day one of flight school, go through all of that, um, go through everything, you get to live those first 12 years, but you will get shot down in Iraq, you will lose your legs, you will go through that. I'd be like, sign me up. <laughs> you know, what I want people to take away from the book is that it's a, an appreciation for what every day is. Like you get bogged down in fighting and, and, and the misery of every day. But I truly, for me, every day has been a gift. From the day that Dan Milberg carried me out of that aircraft and delivered me to safety, every single day has been a gift. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today to stay up to date with all the latest news.